Alright guys, today's review is surprisingly not a mini maid. No, this is actually an adult uh, figure. And when I say that, I don't mean uh, like one of those Japanese figures with the cast off clothes. I meant it's, um, I just meant it's for grown ups. It's a NECA Toys figure. Uh, it's Rescue Mission Ripley. If you read the title of the video, you totally already knew that. Um, so I've been holding off on doing this review for a while now. Uh, for one, I wanted to wait until I got a better camera. But even then, I wanted to wait until the Toys R Us exclusive, like Kenner 90s style version came out. And even though I went to Toys R Us on the day I was supposed to come out, like right when the store opened, like nothing. And I was like, dude, what's up with this? And like, they don't have it. And then I don't know. So it must not have been out on that day, even though I felt like it totally should have been out on that day. And maybe it came out on a different day and then it all got bought up or whatever. Cause I've been looking since, since April 26th, I, I've been looking and I can't find it. And I don't think I'm going to find it. So I don't know. I tried really hard guys, but like, I just, you know, toy hunting is like that. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just, you don't win. Um, so that's that's unfortunate. Uh, I'm kind of bummed out about that. But I, I, I've been wanting to talk about Ripley for a long time, and I, I use these toy reviews, um, you know, part of it just to review the figure, yeah, but also to talk about the character and why I like him, like why I bought that figure in the first place. Um, so I've just been wanting to do that. So we're just going to go ahead and, and look at Rescue Mission Ripley, which is fine. It's still a fantastic figure. I still think it's a must-have. Um, well, I guess I think all the Sigourney Weaver figures are kind of must-haves even the Ghostbuster one that's gonna be coming out soon um, I just really like her as an actress so anyways let's let's uh, take a look at her okay so here's Ripley in all her glory I think this turned out really well for a lot of little reasons um, one of those being the um, the paint like they did a really good job you know of making her her pants look dirty and and scuffed. It's like the perfect shade of blue for those mom jeans she's wearing, but really it's just just the way they managed to like simulate how dirty it looks. And the same the same for her shirt as well. I also like the way they they tried to capture like the curliness of her hair. So I think they did pretty good there as well. For the likeness, I don't know, from the front it doesn't really, really look like Sigourney Weaver to me. I mean, like, yeah, like it kind of does. More from the side it looks like her to me. Yeah, like when you look at her from the side, I feel like, oh, okay, yeah, that's like Sigourney Weaver. But I don't know, from the front, kind of, sort of. I mean... If I had never seen Aliens and I just saw this figure, I wouldn't be able to tell that this is really supposed to be Sigourney Weaver, but maybe that's just me. That's not the case with all of NECA figures, like other other characters, like I know who it is the moment I look at them, but like from here I think it looks like her. Somehow I don't really see it from the front. Anyways, well, all that's really cool. You know, NECA has like a really like keen eye for detail. They're like the Detective Conan of uh, of toy makers. Um, so with that, a lot of this stuff came out really good. For me, I really like the character Ripley. I know she's a really important character, and just not not just like in the movies. I mean, of course she's important in the movies, but I mean, just think I think overall to like science fiction films or action films because they didn't really make her like sexy although I guess like in the first movie she's got that whole get into her spacesuit thing while wearing panties in the beginning but I don't know if I I don't know. aside from that I guess um, they didn't like try and like sexualize her or anything like that and they didn't make her like a Mary Sue where she's just perfect you know it was really great to see that she was scared. She was scared, but she just like 
she dealt with it you know she she just like overcame it so she could do what she needed to do and she had a lot of strength in her resolve um and i think that that's like a really to me i think those i think those things are really admirable you know and i like that she was brave but she was also smart and to me that's a that's a big deal it wasn't just like oh she just kept getting lucky or you know a bunch of arbitrary things just kept happening it was like no it was it was that she was she was smart and and she did you know what she had to do um so i really like that stuff about her i really wish that more characters in fiction were were more like ripley i feel a lot of times you know and, and like especially like in video games you usually have characters that try and be like vasquez which is fine because i love vasquez but um but I really wish that, that they would look to, to Ripley and just be like, look, this is how you do a female character right without, you know, without pandering or without having to, um, you know, sexualize them or, or making them a background character or, um, or just having everything just work out just because, you know, it's just like, Ripley was not a trained soldier. She, you know, didn't know a bunch of martial arts. I'm not entirely sure how well martial arts would help you against the xenomorph. But my point is, she was she was just like a regular person, and I think that that was what really made her really cool. Um, she didn't try to be like a tough guy character, or talk tough, or anything like that. It was really just, it was really just that she was just smart <laughs> and uh i know when the character was first written like when they were first writing the script the character of ripley and all the characters aboard the nostromo they weren't really written to be male or female it could have been interchangeable or either or or whatever and then they just ended up casting whoever it is that they cast and at the time well they cast sigourney weaver and she hadn't been in that many films up till then um and maybe that's a way to do it like when you're writing a character like don't think about them as a man don't think about them as a woman just think about what you want out of the character because it, it, it turned out really well for ripley and, and I, I know it's like a big important character for sigourney weaver if you ever hear her talk about the character and 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 what ripley means to her um it's always really cool when when someone can get her to talk about those things in an interview so um i i always uh, I've always liked her, even though technically my favorite character in the Aliens uh, film is Vasquez. Uh, I, not taking away from that, but um, you know Ripley is just one of my all-time favorites. When I was playing Broforce with my friends, um, we're just streaming and playing this game and drinking, and every now and then throughout the game you unlock like these badass kind of like 80s action heroes right if you don't know what bro force is about well so we're playing we're drinking and i unlocked ripley and i got so excited i mean i got excited i was having fun you know the whole time but i mean but when i got this character i was like oh my gosh this is the best and uh, we came up ac across this really, really difficult boss fight. And it was like this big xenomorph boss fight. We kept dying and dying. And then when I, I my, both of my friends died and it was down to just me and I did it, I beat it and I beat it as Ripley, which made it just like even more special to me. And uh, so I don't know, that was a whole lot of fun. Um, yeah, I would recommend everyone play that game and play Alien Isolation. And, you know, with Alien Isolation, they have the, the DLC where you can play as Ripley. That was also really, really, really special to me. I really like that. Um, but, yeah, so everything about this figure I've, I've really enjoyed. Even, even the shoes, they got those just right. And I know I've, I'm sure I've mentioned it in another video, but they actually make they actually make those shoes in real life right now. I would never wear them, and also I think they're for girls. So maybe I would like to have them, and then just like have them as like a collector's thing. You know what I mean? But 
I would never wear them. But I think they also make like bishops' shoes. See, now I would wear bishops' shoes, but uh, they don't look as unique as as Ripley's do. But um, all of that, all that they did here is is just really, really, really great. And if you don't have this figure, I would say that you probably should. I mean, there's several. Or there's gonna end up being several Sigourney Weaver toys out there uh, soon enough. But I guess if you had to pick one. I guess I would say get this one. They they do make Ripley from from Alien, and but for me that one's just kind of okay. I like it because it comes with Jonesy the cat, and I also had an, an orange cat, but she passed away. But she was like my Jonesy, like you know. Um, but aside from that, if I had to recommend one so far, I think this is still the most iconic. Uh, and a Ripley from Alien Three is coming out. And while I plan on getting that, because I'm one of those like handful of people that actually like Alien 3, um, I still think that this is the most iconic one to have. So if you had to have one, this is the one to get. Um, I'm pretty sure that you know you wouldn't be disappointed when you have it. So really, really good job here by NECA. I'm I'm very happy. Okay, so the only real thing that Ripley comes with is her pulse rifle flamethrower combo. Uh, I kind of wish maybe she would have came with something else. What else? I'm not entirely sure. I guess maybe like a motion tracker or something like that. Because to just have this one single accessory, it's kind of like, oh, like if you if you have like um, Hicks or Hudson, like they came with a bunch of stuff. Like Hudson's got his motion tracker. He's got like a cutting tool. He has his pulse rifle, you know. Um, so like this is this is all you get with Ripley, but it is still is really really awesome The only thing I don't like about it is the strap now the strap itself in a way is fantastic because if you look They did it in a way so it's like the film where she wrapped it around taping two guns together and Then you notice there's all these little ridges like like it's a real strap Isn't that great? Now, you know, so then you might be asking, well then what's your problem with it? My problem with it is that it's like a piece of plastic. So it just, it defies the laws of physics and it just stays up like that. I'd rather just, it was just like a regular strap or like a real like piece of material. So it, would, it just hang down, you know, it had some weight to it. This is just a problem I have with straps on, on toys is that this stuff happens. It's like, how is this happening? Why is this just like frozen in the air like that? Um, that's like a tiny nitpicky thing. It doesn't actually bother me. Outside of that, everything else looks great. All the detail on it, but I mean like just the way it looks like it's kind of scraped and scuffed. Like it's not brand new. It's been through some shit. This is really nice. It's got like the electrical tape wrapped around the ends. Very nice touch there. For the flamethrower bit, that looks good as well. I kind of like uh, the black and the green, you know, those military colors. And then you can turn this for mm, no real reason, but that's a thing. Uh, I do kind of wish maybe they would have had a little something on the end, just like a little piece of like, maybe like translucent blue plastic or something like that to indicate that like a flame you know was there um i think that would have been a really really nice touch but uh you know aside from that i think it's great with my only gripe just being the uh, plasticky strap but aside from that it all looks really cool and since i have a pulse rifle and a flamethrower here let me just go ahead and really quickly compare the mini mates uh, figures. So here's here's a mini mates pulse rifle for comparison. Look at what a good job mini mates did. I mean, it's like it's basically dead on. It's just tiny and cute. And then the same for the flamethrower. Again, it's like a dead on match. It's just tiny and cute.
So very, very neat. I guess with my Mini Mates Ripley, I can now just go ahead and like tape these two together. Seems about right. All right, for Ripley's articulation, she can look left, she can look right, she can bring her head down, not very much. Actually, she can't really look up or down at all. It seems like maybe she kind of sort of wants to, but it's so minimal that it might as well not even be there. Not a big deal, I guess. Anyway, she's got a ball joint at the shoulder. And she's got a single joint at the elbow. And it swivels there at the elbow as well. And then her wrist swivels. And it has a really tiny little hinge that again with a lot of little neck of joints it's like it might as well not be there. Can't really get very much movement out of that hinge. So really it's just a swivel as far as I'm concerned. And then she has a waist, I won't say waist rotation because it doesn't really rotate. It's more like the way they do diaphragm joints. So like her stomach kind of rocks around so she can kind of sort of do like a tiny little ab crunch, but it doesn't help her turn very much. I like really force it to get her to turn that much, but yeah, it's not a lot going on there. And then with the legs, she's got a ball joint at the hips, so she can bring her legs out really far. Do all kinds of like spinning bird kick. Again, I'm not sure what martial arts that it wouldn't help in a xenomorph fight, but uh, yeah, she could do that, I guess. Uh, she can bring her legs pretty far forward but not very far back because of the like rubber crotch piece and yeah so that kind of gets in the way of bringing stuff back unless it just looks like her ass cheeks are melting which just looks weird but yeah but she can bring them far forward so there's there's that at least and then she has just a single joint at the knee I really wish we could start getting like double jointed stuff with from neck up, but uh, I guess this has to do. And then it swivels there as well. Just have her do something like some sort of like Irish jig. Anyways, and then she has a hinge at her ankle. It doesn't move up or down like all that much, but you know, a little bit. I wish she had some toe articulation. Uh, the Marines have some toe articulation, so uh, I kind of wish she did too, but she doesn't. And then, of course, you can turn the foot as well. It has a little bit of that, like, ankle pivot. Oh, now she's kind of in a really weird, <laughs> really weird position. Uh, but yeah, so it's pretty much standard uh, articulation from NECA. Uh, it's very good but i feel like could be better but uh you know uh I, I think with NECA it's that they always they take the sculpt like like it's really important and they don't want too many joints because that kind of mess with the sculpt and so that's why that's why you get what you get but um there you go Okay, for some quick size comparisons, let's use the best Xenomorph release to date, which is the Alien Isolation Xenomorph. Um, again, like, it... The Xenomorphs are really damn big. So even crouching, um, this Xenomorph is just, like, it's almost, it's almost as tall as she is. It's at least up to her shoulder. Um, I, you know how it is when you're, like, collecting figures and you finally get something into, like, that perfect pose and then you're like okay now to never touch it again for as long as I live that's kind of what's happened here with the xenomorph so I really don't want to stand them up so I like to just keep them exactly like this so for a comparison with a standing xenomorph
we'll just go ahead and use the <laughs> the battle damage Zeno that Hudson comes with because I really like this one. Uh, he's so big that now he's out of frame. That's how tall the Zeno just towers over. Okay, that's a little better. So, yeah, I don't know. To be staring this down, oh, how do you just not urinate and defecate all over yourself? I could totally understand that expression and that little noise that Burke makes when he realizes what's about to happen to him. I think, I think we would all make that little noise. And now, We'll go ahead and compare Ripley with her daughter Amanda. Now that I've done this I feel like oh, I should have worked really hard to try and get this done sooner so that I could have put this up on Mother's Day. But uh, I don't know, unfortunately I didn't have that idea until just this second. It's too late. Um, Anyways, but yeah, so for the most part, Amanda, she's basically just uh, Ripley's body, just kind of retooled or whatever. They, I think they just took uh, um, the Ripley from part one and then just kind of like reworked it a little bit so that it can kind of uh, fit like Amanda or, you know, whatever. It's just basically like a new head. But it still looks to me like her mom is just a little bit taller. And I think that that is perfect. They don't 100% look just like each other, but I guess they look enough like each other. For the record, I really, really, really like Amanda Ripley. I think she is one of the best female characters to come out in video games in a long time. And I guess a big part of that is because she's so much like her mother. Again, if you have not played Alien Isolation, I recommend that you do. Actually, I have it like right here because I've been using my video games to like <laughs> stand up my camera. So, uh, yeah, it's like I recommend everyone should pick that up. Anyways, that's going to do it for this review. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have not picked up, I guess, any of the figures that I've shown here, I totally recommend that you do. The Alien Isolation Xenomorph is fantastic. Uh, Amanda is awesome, and of course Ripley is awesome. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I hope to see you next time.